from John Tesh. And as you can see, we have a new look and a new sound to begin our new season. We begin today with Mary Hart, who has one of those great exclusive stories that have always made E.T. so special. Hello, Mary. Hi there, John, and once again, coming to you from New York. You know, it certainly is not often that you get Frank Sinatra to sit down for a chat, much less a television interview. But I did talk with Frank Sr. and Frank Jr. in Atlantic City. Hey, the shark has pretty teeth, dear. It's another town, another room, and another show for the man who's played them all. Just a jackknife has Mac Heath, dear. And just in case you think the man's mystique is a mere memory, think again. Frank Sinatra is still the greatest. This is my grandmother's 80th birthday. I'm in from California to take her to see Frank Sinatra. There'll always be Sinatra. He's the best that ever lived. There's nobody like Frank Sinatra. Took us back to our youth. We were the swooners. For the swoony. <laughs> With scores of movies and records and millions of fans all around the world to his name, why is Francis Albert Sinatra still singing for a supper? Well, of course he doesn't need to, but when there's a music director on stage named Frank Sinatra Jr., it gives him a good reason. Let's say hello to my son Frank who conducts and on stage the father and son relationship is professional and musical. Off stage, the two men are warm, two good friends who respect each other's talents. What, what brought you together as father and son on well, stage? it was about time that we, we did work together. He wasn't doing enough work, so I figured I'd better keep him busy. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to work with Frankie because he's been around the business so long now, and, and we never had much chance to work together. How, how was it the first time with the two of you on stage, Frank looking at, at Frank Jr. as your music director? Were there kind of, a, was there that father-son feeling and that pride, or was it a professional relationship strictly? Well, it's a combination of both, actually. I, mean, I know that he's, a, he's an accomplished musician, a pianist, and, uh, and a conductor. If you got somebody who knows what he knows about what we're doing, then I'm straight. How come you were <laughs> chuckling? Once again, my dad's being very kind, Mary. Oh, you have to understand. No, it, I may have made my share of mistakes. Fortunately, he's a patient man. No, he's been very patient with me. I'm a patient man? And I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. That'll be the day. Believe in me. Frank Jr. has pursued his own musical career over three decades, a task made at once easier and more challenging by carrying with him the Sinatra name. Did you ever feel that you got robbed because your dad was so famous? I wouldn't say for any length of time, no. He just had his pocket picked a little bit. And it's all the more pleasant that I get to work with my old man today, now that I'm at this age, than it ever could have been at a younger age. And it's got to fill you with some pride to hear him say those words. Ah, well, uh, I'm as thrilled as he is, and even more so probably, you know, because uh, I have uh, rarely worked with anybody as a, as a chum. You know, it gets lonely out there sometime when you're doing an hour and a half by yourself. The toughest time the two men faced together was in 1963, when 19-year-old Frank Jr. was kidnapped, held for ransom, and released unharmed three days later. The kidnappers were later caught and convicted. It's been a trying experience. When you look back on that experience, what, what does that mean to you? Well, my, my feeling about that period was... Uh, very confusing. I mean, between anger and anxiety and wanting to hang somebody by the neck if I could find him, uh, it was a very difficult uh, situation to try to hold on to and be calm. I remember that time. It was such a horrible thing to have had happened. It was a painful reminder of reality for a 19-year-old. I mean, when someone under the pretense of delivering a Christmas package screws a 38 in your ear, it gets your undivided attention. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you become conscious of many things. The first thing that struck me was that I had to change my shorts. You know, that whole issue of being part of a famous family was the cause of it. How did, how did you feel and how, did, how long did that stay with you? Being yeah. part of what's called a famous family is the reality. This would not be happening were it not for that. People who pulled that crime were originally going to kidnap Bob Hope's son. Really? It came out in the investigation because they learned that Bob Hope was wealthier than Frank Sinatra. Then they decided that uh, Bob Hope being the great humanitarian, that wouldn't be good for their public image. So instead, they, they took me. For the good times, 
The kidnapping and other rough spots in the life of Frank Sinatra and family have made him reluctant to speak with the press over the years. Yet Sinatra was seen earlier this year in Australia embracing the press. We saw you in Australia a few months back with your arms around the reporters. Are you mellowing? Has your attitude changed or do you want to be My attitude has never changed. I find, I treat people as I find them and how they treat me. Yeah. That's all. I mean, if somebody's going to walk up to you and abuse you for five minutes verbally, you're going to get back at them. Or if they're very nice, you, 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 you pay it back. That's all. No matter what his relationship has been with the press, it's Sinatra's stage presence which has created his following. And after five decades, Old Blue Eyes still has as much sizzle on stage as ever. You better lock your door and call the law because Mac here, that son of a bitch, he's back in town. This Saturday night, Frank Sinatra kicks off an 11-city U.S. tour with Liza Minnelli and Sammy Davis Jr. John? Frank Sinatra's magic has been part of the American fashion. Known as the world's leading performer of popular music, actually came from modest beginnings. He grew up in Hoboken, New Jersey, quickly working his way up as a vocalist with the big bands of Harry James and Tommy Dorsey. Mm, Saturday night is the loneliest night of the week. After being featured on radio's Your Hit Parade, Sinatra's fans multiplied. During World War II, he was an immediate sensation with his unforgettable Times Square appearances. To a legion of Bobby Soxers, he was simply the voice. I fall in love too easily. Hollywood beckoned, and a long screen career began. In the 50s, Frank won an Oscar for his portrayal of Maggio in From Here to Eternity. I done it, Pooh. I escaped just like I said. Sinatra's phenomenal success continued decade after decade. Films, nightclubs, awards, and many humanitarian causes. The voice of one generation has now spanned many and will undoubtedly touch many more. But old man river Mary, Frank Sr. is not known as a man who is easy to interview. How did you find him? Surprisingly easy to interview, John. And I really didn't know what exactly to expect, but it was a very pleasurable experience with both Frank Sr. and Frank Jr., something I'd gladly repeat. Good job. You know, uh, you won't want to miss tomorrow's Inside Report as we show you exclusive footage of a savage night.